Hi everybody, my name is Scott, or Battle Beaver if you prefer. Today I have my brand new revolver. This happens to be the first revolver I've ever owned. I've been shooting for about uh, 25 years almost now. Uh, this is a Smith & Wesson M&P R8. So I'm going to do a quick unboxing, very quick, because I never saw the point in unboxings, but I'm going to do a quick one for you. Uh, do a quick bench review, take the trigger pulls of the single and double action, and then I'm going to take it to the range with my video camera. Okay, so here's the box. Nothing really special, very similar to the uh, other Smith & Wesson boxes. Inside the box, of course, you have the R8. I'll put that aside, go into much more detail about that in a second. At the top of the box here, you have your cable lock. I believe it's, uh, no, it's not actually branded Smith & Wesson. You have your uh, ghost clips or ghost rings, I believe they're called. You have a couple of keys for the lock, and I'll go into detail about that as well. And you have the top rail and the mounting hardware for the top rail. Also, you have the factory fired round, uh, Smith and Wesson pamphlet to join the MR NRA. I'm already a member warranty card and finally the manual okay so here's a closer look at the revolver this is the R8 they also make a TRR8 which is only slightly different uh, just explain the differences to you real quick the R8 comes with the bottom rail integrated into the barrel uh, the top one is removable and it doesn't come installed uh, the TRR8, I believe the top and the bottom rail are removable. And one other difference in the TRR8, you see the cutout here for the uh, ejection rod for the cylinder. I believe on the TRR8, there's a cutout here as well. So this is unique, at least to me anyway. I've never owned a revolver before. This is actually an eight round revolver. It'll take 357 Magnum. 38 special and 38 plus P. It has a Smith & Wesson locking system, a trigger lock integrated into the frame. A lot of Smith & Wessons come with these and to lock the lock the trigger you have to push forward the cylinder release, stick this small key in, turn it. I don't know if you can see on camera, I'll zoom in here. When you turn it you'll see this small piece of metal up here that says locked. And that obviously prevents you from pulling the trigger. I would guess that qualifies as a trigger lock here in Canada. Um, in some ways is actually more secure than you know one of those combo trigger locks that you that you put on the trigger here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock it. Again, you just push the cylinder, turn it clockwise to unlock it. And you'll see that little piece has popped out and you can now pull the trigger. Now the gun comes with three of these in the package. These are moon clips. I think I might have called them a second ago uh, ghost clips or something, I'm not sure. But they are moon clips. You get three of them. Um, I found them a little bit awkward to use. I suppose if you're competition shooting and you don't want to fiddle around with a speed loader, you can use these. I'm not sure if these are meant to be disposable or not. They're made out of extremely thin steel of some kind. They got pretty good spring to them. I thought they would bend easily and not bend back, but that's not the case. I'll show you one here I have that has all empty 38 specials in it. This is the way it would look obviously when you eject it. And I'll show you now that it doesn't interfere with anything so these are unloaded empty rounds okay I finally got the empty rounds back in and just to confirm you'll see the firearm is still safe these are just empty shells uh, clearly these weren't meant to be put back in empty because I had a heck of a time getting them back in there but I just wanted to show you that it keeps the shells together and if you're into reloading, I suppose it would make them easier to collect on the floor of the range or outside or wherever you are. I don't reload at the moment anyway, but I still collect my brass. But I find these a bit of a pain in the arse to use, frankly. Um, to get them off, 
without bending the clips you really need something like a I'm just going to grab my screwdriver here. Maybe a pencil or something to pull the first one off. The rest of them are generally pretty easy once you have the first one off. So now these, I found them online. I think you can get them in bulk in 10 packs, but they're still about uh, 40 or 50 cents each. So I would almost consider these disposable. Um, if I could afford a whole bunch of them, I might use them, but I'm instead going to look for a speed loader. Now just for comparison, here's one loaded with live rounds. This is 38 Special Federal. Okay, here's the top rail that comes with the R8. Comes with uh, four mounting screws and also four other screws if you just want to block these holes. So a couple of concerns I have about this. When I first mounted this rail just to test mount it, uh, it made some minor marks on the paint job on the top of the barrel here. Now I found out why, if I run my finger along here where the rail makes contact with the barrel, there's a barely um, feelable little ridges of machining marks. So what I'll probably do is take some fine um, emery cloth or something and just give that a rub. Uh, the other concern is, and again it's a minor complaint, is I wish they had to finish this rail in the same glossy black as a firearm because when it is on it kind of sticks out a little bit in my opinion. Now personally I probably won't use this top rail. I'm fine with the iron sights. At some point I might get a aim point micro dot or something but I will mount this just to show you how it looks. The other thing that I wish they had done these filler screws here that again these do nothing but plug these holes it would have been nice if these came in black just to make it look better at the top. Okay, so I'm just gonna, like I said, quickly mount the rail. Simple as placing it on using the supplied bolts. Now, it doesn't come with the Allen key that fits these, which was kind of surprising actually because you'd think these would be pretty cheap, but uh, you probably have one of these hanging around anyway. So I'll go ahead and mount it and show you how it looks. Okay, so here it is with the top rail mounted. As I said, you can notice the finish on the rail is different than the finish on the firearm. So I'm going to mount a few things to it just for fun and show you what it looks like with some sights mounted. <laughs> okay, so obviously this is ridiculous. Um, I took the my EOTech EXPS2 and my G33 magnifier off of my AR and I also have a TLR2, uh, TLR1 HL um, weapon light. So I just wanted to see how ridiculous I could make this thing. Some of you guys might think it looks cool. I could totally see this ending up on a movie somewhere. Somebody shooting it like this. But uh, obviously you'd never mount anything like this on it. Maybe a micro dot or something. Oh, speaking of movies, um, the R8 showed up. I'm not a big uh, Walking Dead fan. But the R8 did show up, I think, two or three weeks ago on the Sunday episode, new episode. Rick was, uh, Rick actually had an R8. Okay, I've took off the crazy optics. I thought it was pretty funny looking, actually. But I'm going to test the trigger pull now. Now, my Lyman digital trigger pull gauge actually only goes to 12 pounds, I believe. And I'm pretty sure the double action pull on this is closer to 13 or maybe a bit over 13. But... Let's try it anyway and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Actually, 11 pounds, 15 ounces. I'm going to do it once more. Eleven pounds, 9.0 ounces. So. Um, maybe it is around 12 pounds then. So I'll do it. I'll do a single action pull and see what the weight of that is. Okay, I have it cocked. Let's see what the single action pull is. Four pounds, 10.8 ounces. I'll do that a couple of times more just to get an average. Four pounds, 9.1. And we'll take one more. Four 
four pounds, 10.6 ounces. So it's not a bad single action pole. Again, I'm not familiar with revolvers, so I don't know if that's good uh, for a single action, but it does feel good to me at least when I pull the trigger. Very crisp. The double action, of course, has a pretty long pull. Now it gets lighter about halfway and then heavier again before it breaks. So it's a middle area where it seems lighter, then it gets a bit heavier at the back, and then it breaks. So as a comparison for size, I have a Smith & Wesson M&P 9. I'll just overlay it to let you know the size of the revolver. It is a large revolver. Okay, I've got my scale out, so let's give this a quick weigh. Weighs in at two pounds, six and five eighths ounces, so almost two pounds, seven ounces. Now I'll compare that with the Smith & Wesson 9mm, which weighs in at one pound, nine ounces. So it's almost a pound heavier, but I guess that's to be expected with a revolver of this type. It's very solidly built. The barrel is big. And remember, I have the top rail on, which is removable. Now, one other important thing I feel I should mention, when I was researching this revolver, I found some forum posts from back in 2010 about a problem with the faint frame cracking. I don't know if it was up here or back here. I, I didn't pay much attention to it because the posts were from back in 2010. Apparently uh, Smith fixed all the issues through warranty, but I've seen no mention of any problems with the newer run of firearms. And like I said, I just picked this up a couple of weeks ago in a late November, mid-November 2014. So one other thing I read about the R8 and the TRR8, which I couldn't confirm on the Smith & Wesson site, is these were developed by the Performance Center for the needs of police and military for their shield bearers. Now what I mean by that is they wanted a high capacity, high caliber wheel gun, revolver. So Smith developed this. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but I've read it on several forums. And what I mean by a shield gun, I'll show you real quickly. I'm just going to grab my cutting board here. So imagine an officer's got his holding a shield back here and he's hiding behind the shield for protection and he's using a semi-automatic like this. Well the problem occurs when the gun cycles. Uh, there's a chance, depending on how he's holding it, that the slide can, could come back, hit the shield and you'd get uh, failures of the firearm. So apparently, again, I can't confirm it. This is why Smith developed the high capacity revolver. Now, it kind of makes sense because the revolver really you can hold anywhere and there'll be no interference from the shield. Okay guys, that's it for my bench review. I'm gonna pack this up and take it to the range. Hi guys, I'm here at Urban Tactical, which is a range I belong to in Brantford, Ontario. Uh, if you hear any gunshots, hopefully I can still speak over them. They are coming from the range next door, which they call their Bravo range. I am on their Alpha range, or their Action range as some people call it. Uh, what's unique about this range is the backstop. The backstop is made up of these 85 pound hard rubber bricks, I guess you could call them. These are one foot deep by one foot high by two feet wide. And these are actually certified for up to 308 caliber. The other unique thing about this is, because it's a zero meter backstop, you can actually walk right up to the wall and shoot basically right against the wall, which is kind of cool. So I have brought a couple of calibers with me today that could, because obviously this, uh, this revolver takes two. I brought some S&B 38 Special and I have some Ferrell 357 Magnum. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so I've got two rounds of 38 Special here. I'm gonna be shooting from about five meters. Uh, just gonna start off with two rounds first on the left target. I'm gonna do the first round single action and the next one double action. Okay, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna cock it so I'm single action. Okay, let's go have a look at the target. 
Okay, uh, my double action shot was right in the center of the target. And again, I was shooting from about five meters, which is anywhere from 16 to 17 feet. My single action was a little bit high. So let's move on to the other target, and I'm gonna try some 357. Okay, now I've got my two rounds of Federal 357. I'm gonna be shooting on the right target. Once again, single action for the first one, double action for the second. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is a 357 target. I believe that was my single action, high again, just like the other one with 38 special. And my double action was low. Okay, I wanna do one final shoot before I leave. Uh, this is just going to be for demonstration of how cool this back wall is. I'm literally going to be probably about three inches from the target. I'm going to do eight rounds rapid fire of 38 special since this is an eight round revolver which is super cool. And uh, let's do it. First round will be single action, the rest will be double. Please ignore the peanut gallery in the background, that's Dave from the range. Uh, anyway, obviously my target blew apart just from the muzzle blast coming out of the uh, revolver. So, pretty cool back wall. Okay, I just got back from the range a couple of hours ago. Um, I did like the way this shot for my first revolver. Again, I have nothing to compare it with because, again, this is my first revolver. So, I hope you liked the video. Please consider subscribing like us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash battlebeaver and you can subscribe up there in the corner or at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.